Right, Lord of Lancaster. Uh, right. During my reset, I found out you've had, you know, Lee loved you basically. He had a he had a bond of you that came when he was six year old. To, you know, he he respected you. You know, so you've had twenty years of close friendship. Um, what was he like? You know, when in Lee, what was he? Nineteen eighty three. When he was eighteen, um, he went to prison. You, you didn't have a great deal of anything to do with him then, but. You know, all the way through his adult life, he was always running you, wasn't he, and contacting you and that, and there was, there was still, he was always asking for his train together now and again yeah, and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what was Lee, what was yours and Lee's, like, relationship when he was, you know, you were both adults? Well, um, if I've never seen him uh, for a while, it was as if we've never been parted, mm. you know, as if um, you'd never... Uh, you know, you're saying you're the same all the time, that you both never change for each other in a friendship. Yeah, that's a, that's a sign of, like, real good friends, isn't it? You know, you can be, you can not see each other for a year, and then you pick off, like, where you started. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, we, we would, um... I've, I've never seen Lee in front of me, um... lose his temper or be aggressive or, you know, anything like that. Mm. Yeah, it's quite interesting, that, because the neighbour who said me, said, you know, he said, for a guy who used to fight a lot, he said Lee wouldn't swear a lot. I never heard him swear. He said he wouldn't swear. And that's that. That and is. He, yeah, and he said, oh, he said he, he um, he had a bit of a, like an effeminate voice, like a girl's voice. Yeah. Uh, what was the other thing he said? He said, but he said even when he was fighting, he said he didn't have a bad temper. Believe it. Yeah, or not. that's what I mean. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But well, he people swear a lot when they have a bad temper and mm. call names. He was never. But like he was quite placid, mm. you know. Yeah, Dan Collins said that as well as cousin. Um, yeah. You know, what what was, you know, did he, what was your relationship? Did you train much when you were older then or? Well, um, I always remember the last time I trained with them was at Thornton. So this is the picture I've used yeah, for this interview. Club, yeah. So he stood there with the blonde hair. I think we've discussed that and we think that was about 1987. Yeah, so yeah. So mm. probably 86, 87. Yeah, you're right, um, yeah. With the Jeffreys brothers, Brian and Molly. Yeah. Um, so was that the last time you've ever trained together? That's the last time we trained together in the gym and really enjoyed ourselves that day because it was a really good social day as well as a good training day. Wasn't that a day of training. training for the bouncers or something? Where you uh, the doorman, the John doorman. John Black and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Black wasn't there. Right. Uh, he trained with John Black privately, like I used to train with John Black privately, mm. you know. Right, and your quite qualified to answer this Lorna because you know a lot about your boxing. Lee as a boxer, what was his style? Um, I think he could, um, some are orthodox and some are southport mm. and I think he could, do, I think he was confident enough to do both, you know. Uh, I'm a dexterous. Both, yeah, well both angles right. really, yeah. Because right, mm. a lot of people said to me, they said he was blessed with the power of the punch in both hands. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. Where some people mm. they were either leading with the right or leading with the re uh, left when they do mm. um, boxing, but he, he he could go at any direction. Mm. Stephen left Stair or said right. the other week. He said for a start, Lee had arms six, seven inches longer than everybody else. Yeah, he'd be there. Mm. He'd be there quick with having long arms. And, and, and uh, you know, looking at him because he's six or four, he was obviously a heavyweight. You'd have thought like he would be quite. Slow, heavyweight side, but That's right, was he fast? Was he fast? Um, was he, what was his? I think uh, he had a good a good punch. Mm. You know, mm. uh, a, a good you know if he hit somebody, he hit somebody. You mm. know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and his his diet was. I mean, to look at him, you can see all the way through his life, he didn't have any fat on him, did he? Did no, he, did no. He, did, he, he, did he diet though, or did he? Would he watch what he was eating or what? Um, I think he, he he was brought up on good food. Right. You know, he was mm. brought up with, you know, a good, a good meal, mm. meat and veg, mm -hmm. you know. So probably that's what he, you know, he, he, he ate, mm. you know, mm. a good, a good nice meal. Yeah. And, you know, you've told me a few stories, Lorna. Um, I mean, we're going to be, you know, we probably will save a few for the documentary. But, you know, 
he had a funny sense of humour, Lee, didn't he? And oh, I, yeah. Didn't he? Didn't he? It wasn't he thought it was hilarious when you and Ducko were going to fight one night and then he was... Oh, we did have a fight, me and Ducko, one night. What? I went into Masters and Brenda was at the door because she always collected the money. Mm. And um, I was, like, look, wondering if Lee was in, but mm. Lee wasn't in that day. And I didn't know Ducko this time. Mm. And um, Ducko touched my friend's bum and mm. she said, will you tell him to stop touching my bum so I just asked him to stop touching the bum mm. and he tried to throw me out and he couldn't move me mm. then he attacked me so I threw him on the floor Did you? then I walked out and he shot punches and I blocked them and then um, he walked back in and back out again and he shook my hand mm. and gave me a kiss in the cheek and apologised really? yeah well, Lee thought it was a late. Lee thought it was a late. That's what they were all talking about. Right. When we come out, Lee said, they've been talking about you there. said, nothing bad, has he? He said, no, they were all laughing because they said that he, mess, he met his match. Didn't he say, yeah, you, you, you fought uh, harder than some of the men he fought with? Pardon? Didn't he say that you were tougher than some of yeah, the men? Yeah, 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 he did actually, yeah. Mm. He did after the fight, yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah. But, so, um, the yeah. people I spoke, you know, like Barry Fulton and all that, like, uh, you know, people with a better sense have said sometimes I try and sit down with Lee and try and talk. I mean, surely you're capable of. You were, Lee would have listened to you more than anyone. Did you ever sit him down at times in his life, Lorna, and say, Lee, maybe you just need to calm down a little bit? And did you ever do anything like that? No, because um, he wasn't serious, was he? No, no we, um, we were all right together and things like that. But because he was um, uh, finding himself out as himself mm. you know i didn't really uh have a serious um talk with him about 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 he about his life at all really because mm. i didn't ever wanted to think um that i'd be judging him anyway mm. i heard stories about him mm. but i'm always a great believer what kind of stories at this time mm. right you were very much you know a born again christian <laughs> And Lee knew that, didn't he? And he respected yeah, it. yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. You know, so when you say you'd heard stories, it, it was a common, common knowledge what Lee was up to in the town with yeah, the blues and yeah, all that. So yeah. Yeah, this got back to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. But, I mean, um, I'm a great believer that what people do in a private life is between them, them, them and God. Mm. You know, and I wouldn't say things what he did in his private life in that area unless they wanted to speak to me about it. And they mm. opened up about it. Mm. Yeah. You never ever did though. No, no, no. Right. And um. He did. He did. Brenda did tell me that he was going to come to my house when he got shot to stay with me. That was the second time. Yeah. He shot uh, the second time. Yeah. And asked if asked his mum if I think that I would have him and I, and uh, Brenda said yeah I would mm. I would have had him yeah I'd have him, would have him stay at my house. That's just because he needed to get out of Middlesbrough, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, you're right. He likes living in different places and mm. wandering about. But if if it had come and um, we would have had that time of a, a serious mm. chat and you know we'd have had that time to um, think about his life and where he was going and maybe he never had that chance of many mm. friends who we could really talk to about them areas. Mm. You know, it's, um, I know, well, obviously I've done a lot of research, but that's definitely 100% true that when, three weeks before Lee died, he went to see a vicar, didn't he, in South Bank? Yeah, he went to see a, a minister, Brenda told me, mm. and uh, he, he always knew that I, that I was a Christian and I wrote mm. something in his school book about it mm. and uh, maybe looked at it and he thought about it when it was going through a bad time mm. and um, Brenda showed me the letter of the minister and the minister said in the letter that um, this man Lee is, is a kind and nice man mm. and I do see uh, good things about this mm. about this man so I, he might have had a serious they talk had a, they had a, a um, See, Graham Seeds told me that, you know, I've kind of, mm. they had a, a chat for an hour and a half mm, um, inside, it was in a church yeah. and, you know, so that's what he's observed in Lee is, you know, but then again, it doesn't time with the, the media, does it, the, he's not allowed to be this human, he's not allowed to be this 26 year old lad who's making mistakes because he's a figure of evil to people, but, you know, reality is he, he was a young lad, wasn't he? And oh yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah. He, he was a he was a young lad, but I think sometimes young young lads 
that a joe can laugh and put a big shield up and they keep themselves busy but when the town when they're on their own they start mm. thinking seriously yeah and maybe he was looking for someone where he wanted to add that serious talk to you know mm. to um try and sort his out life out because it might have been getting too yeah. much for him yeah i think that's definitely you know been the case i've sat and spoke to people you know i'm not gonna certainly mm, won't yeah. be naming them but uh it they've they said that's that's the way he was heading you know some people were laughing in front of me and said uh said he wasn't he was gonna you know be like this all the time but you know he, he when everyone's out to kill you left right and center it must have just been horrible yeah it's like a target you're a target to people it sounds to me lee has always been a target. lee was a target when you met yeah. him right yeah when he was, he was six, yeah. when he was six year old mm. you met the kid who was yeah. a target to yeah, the 12 target, 30 year olds yeah, right to people and then 20 years fast forward he was a target yeah yeah so for everybody out to get him yeah so you know it's that it makes people think doesn't it you know he was this you know is a target was, you know the many things Lorna that um when he was let out on bail he was he was on bail for the threat to kill for Islam goal for Peter Wilson's broken neck mm. for breaking David Tappan's jaw I think there was one or, one or two well never again will that ever happen where you know and it, you know Vince Agar's interview for the new book has said well we're Cleveland police you know I mean maybe it's maybe controversial so I have to word it carefully but you know in his opinion they've just pop, popped him on the street and pulled a painted a target on his head again you know and obviously we know what happened it was inevitable he was going to be killed um we we were talking earlier and i th i think now you know i mean if my friend graham seed big hero man you know we've had chats me and graham and you before we were on record and he said if he was here now 53 year old 54 in june this year could you imagine if he'd have turned the corner he might have yeah he had bullet holes in his knees and in his feet could you imagine that story of him going in prison saying lads i used to be the baddest of all baddest but i've turned my life around now could you imagine what he could have done the message he could have delivered to people well, he could have done wonders couldn't he yeah well well i know people like lee and i know a person that was in the triads mm. i know people in christine magazines that have been a criminal that have been the top man and a lot of them have give their life to god and change because they were at that time they wanted to be mm. they fit the brick wall and they've realized that they needed to change mm -hmm. it is it's a crying shame isn't it it is you know i know she get quite emotional now and um you know this is all it's been nearly 30 years now Lorna and it's almost like people are just like wow hang on a minute I never had this sad you know and it's it's almost you know if I can get a couple of people that you know I didn't know him so I'm not, I'm not you know I'm not pro Lee Duffy I'm not anti Lee Duffy I'm just doing this as like almost a journalist if you like being an author and um, you know it's certainly that's just what happened wasn't it just that's how it you know people would like to portray him as this guy who was the terminator who who didn't feel pain and you know went and tax knocked him out and that and you know but you you've got a you've got a, a human being in here haven't you you see what it is when a child hasn't hasn't felt a love of anybody mm. a lot of them want to be somebody mm -hmm. they want to make a name for themselves they want to people to love them because they haven't felt lo love themselves in some situations mm. and some do do what they can to get that fame and that attention mm. so that people will look up to them and not see them the little weak lad that got mm. beat up mm. and um the the man that is become somebody because every child that gets rejected do want to become somebody to please the parents mm -hmm. because they weren't pleasing the parents so when they go out in the world to try to please people mm. and try and get a name for themselves a lot of rejected children and, and that's certainly what he did didn't he yeah yeah that's what he wanted he, he wanted a book written about him like mm. you said he always said read it in my book when did he I ever died. say that to you Lorna no no I've only learnt it off you mm. he never said anything like that to me because I went in that you know I mm. went out with them with mm. you know what he was out with the lads mm. and um, he, he, he was saying this it sounded to me that he must have thought that he weren't gonna live 
when it gets old, he must have had it in his mm. head and in his thoughts mm. that he was going to die with the life mm. that he was living. Mm. So he was saying that to say that maybe one day they'll write a book about mm. me and obviously oh, absolutely. You, come, that's, that's, you come along. Yeah. And Lee wanted someone to write mm. a book about him, you know, and like you want to see people look at this book or look at this film and say, look, at there's other Lees out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and no when he got older he decided to be the man he wanted to be mm -hmm. but men like him can change you know mm -hmm. you know I mean that's come you know <coughs> Neil Booth was very close to Lee yeah he certainly had no part in anything I've ever done projects wise yeah um but Lee you know Neil's a good a good friend of mine and he said well he said he used to say that all the time he said you can put this in the book when I'm gone you know, other one or two other people I won't name. Yeah. Um, but we're incredibly close to Lee. Yeah. He said he said it all the time. It's one of his, you know, things that he, and uh, you know, it's. I think, you know, not everyone gets what I'm doing. Um, we've we've had a chat, Lon, and you know, I think you do. We've spoke off the camera, um, and you you thought it needed to be done, didn't you? You, I think you acknowledged that I'm doing this in the right way. Well, you. Why I think it's good what you're doing is that when they read about Lee that he was beat up and abused, people out there need to look at people that this has happened to and they need to take interest in them or people that are likely mm. and they need to help them and they need to support them and they need to realise that there's a lot of Lee Duffies out there mm. that was a child that felt rejected by friends and that was um, a bit of a loner. Mm. I felt he was a bit of a loner. Yeah, that's been, that's been des described so yeah. many times. Yeah, he might have had friends and he might have um, had different friends, mm. but inside he had a look of being alone in his mm. situations. Mm. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's people like, oh, well, that wasn't right, that wasn't right. You know, some of the, some of the facts have come of, you know, come from the next door neighbour. They've lived there 55 years, 20 of them were next door to Lee Duffy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sure they'd know. And, you know, it's, I think it's commonly known now that Lee, he didn't like being at home at times, did he? You know, kind of, um, there was an awkward one. It's, you know, growing up in the 70s is a lot different to being in the 21st yeah, century, right. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think um, Lee wanted to find, um, people that you could relate to and associate with and when you find them friends that uh, like 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 himself then he would feel at home and comfortable with mm. that he wasn't the only one that was going through the same thing that he was going through mm -hmm. yeah you know uh, one of his friends said to me he said uh, he said if you, t you know he had the image he said you, you know you heard the stories and then you walk around the car and you've seen Lee looking the way he did he said but if some people went up the way to take a to take the time to get to know him. Yeah, that's all I needed to do. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, um, you see, the thing with a lot of men, that they don't, that's why there's a lot of percentage, I mean, I don't want to get into a depressing situation, but there's a lot of percentage men commit suicide mm -hmm. because they don't open up to people mm. where women would talk about things. A lot of men all things in. Yeah, because, you know, Lee Duffy had the, the match image. She didn't go in with his image, but, you know, as you you've said, we've discussed things that that did get spoken behind closed doors. Lee was, you know, I'm sick everywhere I go. People are trying to kill me. You know that it's, it's still young shoulders, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, it's like a, a fugitive life. It's like um, I think Lee should have moved out the area altogether and started all over again, like a lot of lot of people do mm. that have been in that sort of life and some people have done that and not even give them the names of the dress he'd have been better off doing something like that mm. he'd have survived better if he had a new 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 area yeah. new people yeah i mean he was, he was offered all that with the sayers that they, they were like they oh loved, that's good they loved him you yeah that would have been uh yeah. you know stephen says nice lovely guy good sense of humor and he's going to be the forward for this new yeah. book and he said yeah. You know, he said when he, he come up to Newcastle, yeah. when he was, you know, he needed to escape out of Middlesbrough. He, yeah. He only ever stayed there a couple of weeks because he wanted to get back because, you know. He wanted to get back. Yeah, he, he loved Middlesbrough, he was passionate about Middlesbrough. 
um, you know, but ideally, looking back in hindsight, it probably was it was the worst thing he could have ever done, wasn't it? Well, a lot of people that have been in prison and lived a, a, a life like that, the have to move sometimes because they've got that many enemies where they live mm. that they've got no choice to move. And maybe when Lee got shot, maybe he should have went with these people. You see, people have given him a chance. He could have come to stay with me and had a serious talk, or mm. he could have come to his friends at Newcastle. Mm -hmm. But something was drawing him to Middlesbrough for him to want to stay there. He want he had, he's had. He loved the event. He loved being out. He loved people talking yeah, about yeah, him. You know. I think he loved the buzz of it all. Yeah, of it all. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the buzz of it all, and he didn't want to let go of that. Mm. Do you know, Lorna? One last question is, you know, I don't want to upset you in that, and no. you know, mm. it's we're gonna you're gonna feature in the documentary. Um, the other book's going to come, um, which is the final one from me regarding Lee Duffy. Um, but if you could look back, how, how do you remember Lee? Do you, you know, do you, what, what's your first, do you remember him as the man or did you, did you first thought that little boy used to cuddle, used to cl carry on carry, the shoulders? You know, yeah, like, a, yeah, like, a, a, like, a, yeah, like a monkey like, carrying his little yeah. leg. I, I remember, I remember um, a joyful lappy, always smiling. Mm. You know, uh, little lad that had the appearance of a lovely, uh, enjoyed life. Yeah. You know, he was full of active, and um, he always had a smile on his face when you took him out. You know, mm. and he was always grateful when you took him out as well. Yeah. And there is a gap with me and Lee because I had to do a lot of training and that. Yeah. But um, the change, the change in Lee. And the life that he lived um, was a, of expected of it really, because he was living a dangerous life, mm. you know. And people keep saying to me, "If you live by the sword, you you die by the sword." He really needed what I did when I was thirteen, mm. where I, new friends and new interests, mm. and not knock about with you know mm. lads that wanted to fight them and mm. things like that yeah it's uh i only found out i mean i put it in the book but i didn't realize it was so close towards the end but terry dicko yeah uh loved lee and lee loved mm. him and he, he pulled Lee two weeks before he died did he and he said lee you need to calm down or you're gonna end up dead and lee yeah. just stood up laughing his head off put his arms above his head like he won the olympic gold and he just said i live by the sword and i'll die by the sword just laughing just Two weeks later, he was dead. Mm, you know, but yeah. he said that's he said that's how I remember him. Mm. You know, but um, was there anything you wanted to add to that before I turn it off? Anything you wanted to just? Uh, no, I'm. Ju I just. Oh, I just hope that men that watch this film and men that want to be the image of a hard man and street fighter. I mm. think they're not setting examples to young children and young mm. people today. Um, I read a book where Lee was in, I don't know who the author was in, but in this book it was all people that were fighters like Lee. Mm. And in this book, every fighter that mm. showed the gravestone right. in every chapter. And, mm. it's, and it's pretty sad, you know, yeah. that, that Lee's ended like that. But there's a lot of Lee's out there Absolutely. that are still living that you know, life. It's, it's he, there's no point being there. Especially when they've got children, mm. they've got to start thinking of the children. Is this the sort of life you want to give your mm. image to children? Violence mm. and fighting and mm. want to live in that area. If you've got a son, yeah. would you like him to be the image of you? Mm. You know. Yeah. I mean, he, he was, he's without shadow of a doubt, the hardest in the cemetery, isn't he? Yeah, as a street, in, in the street fighter, uh, I think he would he, he would have been one of the hardest street fighters. But mm. like I said to him when he was six year old, I would rather him not be a street fighter. If mm. it had been a boxer mm -hmm. in the Olympics or did sport mm. for fighting, I'd rather he did that than the life that he mm. that he lived. Yeah. Um, well, thanks thanks for your time, Lorna. What I'm going to do is we're going to get. Re Recording in a couple of weeks, so you know. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's anyone who could who could really judge Lee's childhood like you could, because you've seen it all, you know. And um, you know, it'll be your be your chance to to get it out there and just tell people you're sad. 
And he, he was a like he was very likable, wasn't he? Yeah, I'd love I'd love to speak to younger lads though that mm. like to be the it man or like to be the hard man. Mm. I love them to try and to learn from Lee, you mm. know. Yeah, it's yeah. um yeah, I mean imagine that the the message he, if he'd have been here now in his early fifties it would have been absolutely staggering. It would have been, wouldn't it? Could you, this guy who's did all this, it was as bad to the core, but he's turned his life round. Well, when I got, first got converted, people round England wanted me to give my testimony. Mm. And how, how, how I used to do street fighting as a teenager, and how I change and become judo and boxer player and give that up. And mm. I seen the difference in my life. Mm. Mm -hmm. That it was more calm. I didn't have to look round my shoulders who was going to hit me next, uh, more respect and I felt good in myself because I was doing something in my life and it was going somewhere mm -hmm. where when you fight on the streets it only ends up like how Lee, how Lee's ended because a lot do mm -hmm. shoot you or knife you because they can't beat you. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this before turning the tape is, yeah. you're very spirit spiritual mm -hmm. Lorna, have yeah. you ever felt anything the last couple of years, kind of, anything that, you know, that people have come back to you or what do you mean sorry have you ever felt anything like spirits around you you know kind of people well um well i don't know how to share this but mm. um i have the picture of me and lee and my dad on my on the side mm. and um it flew off. I woke up five o'clock in the morning and it flew off and it hit the floor. Mm. Lee's picture. And then the next day, you sent me the book. Your book came really? the next day. Wow. And I said a prayer. I thought, is there some sort, you know, because you do mm. every house you go in, mm -hmm. when people go into, um, you know, the dead. I'm, mm. I'm not a believer that I'm a believer of Jesus, but I know people do, mm -hmm. that some weird things do happen. Mm. You know, some mm. some um, things of when people die, that sometimes some big thing, some some things can happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it does happen, mm. then they need to pray about it. And mm. um, yeah, well, is there anything you wanted to last word on me? No, I just I, I just hope that the the books and the and the film would uh, speak to young young lads and lead death would not that he didn't die in vain, mm -hmm. that he'll speak to other young lads. Yeah, and they may think, yeah. Right. Thank you very much for your time, Alan. You're welcome.